What's up, YouTube? This is John Hammond, looking again at the Natus War Game from Over the Wire. Uh, now we're on level 16. So, in the last video, we did a little blind sequel attack, and that required a little bit of a Python loop that we were working with, so I'm going to clean up some of that code. Um, and now we've got just a basic script where we can get the page of this level here. So, set the syntax to HTML or PHP, either one really. Okay, cool. So now we've got that color here, we can read this page. For security reasons, we now filter even more on certain characters. And this has the form with the fine words containing and the needle uh, that we're searching for. Okay, so this in the output here with the preformatted text, this looks like the same kind of grepping through a dictionary file uh, level that we've seen in, in kind of previous renditions here. So let's see what they've done to actually make this a little bit different. Let's view that source code. Um, Deentitize this, and it looks like the line breaks aren't coming through, so we'll just take all those HTML break tags and replace them with new line characters. Okay, so now we've got the PHP code visible in between these pre tags here. You can see the question mark and greater than less than symbols to note the PHP code. So we've got a key variable originally set to nothing, but we test if we actually send a request where needle comes through, um, we use that as the form. Uh, and we're determining, okay, if key isn't set to nothing, if it's actually if it actually has value, we'll do uh, regular expressions match against it. Uh, anything in this set, it looks like, um, you can tell the set because of the open and close uh, square braces. So uh, black listing, the characters of a semicolon, uh, pipe symbol, ampersand, backtick, a single quote, and double quote. And if any of those characters do exist in there, all it does is print input contains legal character. If it passes that check, it'll go ahead and run the command. It'll run the system shell command, grep, tack i, the key argument against the dictionary.txt, but this time the level's a little bit different because the key argument is passed in double quotes, so it is isolated as its own argument. We can't get around that like we had in some of the previous levels. But it's still running a shell command, it's still running a system command, so let's see if we can find some technique that'll let us take advantage of this vulnerability here. Um, I'm noticing we can't get around it with the double quotes or the single quotes. The backticks kind of ruin our luck for command substitution, but not entirely. Um, some of you that may have seen some of my other videos from the uh, Leviathan videos in Over the Wire, um, I've tried originally trying to do some command substitution with backticks, and then I was informed that, hey, that's a deprecated and stupid way to do it. Oh, I posted that to the source code. Let's remove that. Go back to the original page. And, okay, with the backticks, obviously we do not pass that blacklist, so we got to figure out something else. We can do command substitution with the different style syntax, with the dollar sign and the parentheses. Now we can run commands like ls or who am I or view the password, etc., the issue is, since this is command substitution, we don't actually get any output. Well, I guess we get output, but it's going to be replaced in line of that command, that grep command. So it's trying to grep for the result of who am I here, Natus 16, in the dictionary.txt file. Obviously, there aren't any lines that match Natus 16, so we're not getting out any output. That's curious, right? Because we don't get the output of the command, but we can determine whether or not something is visible or, or present in a dictionary.txt file. Doesn't help us, like, kind of at the surface level, but thinking off the heels of that last video, where we did a blind SQL injection, we figured out the existence of a user, or whether or not a user doesn't exist, to leak out a password, to leak out data. So... In this level, we can figure out whether or not something exists in the dictionary.txt file, or if it doesn't. And we have the potential to get the password in our query, because we could just, you know, cat, etc., like Natus Web Pass, Natus 17. And if we were to run this, obviously we're not going to get any output from the dictionary.txt file, because it can't find that string in the dictionary.txt file. So what if we were to only get a part of the password out? What if we were to just grep for, like, the letter A in the password? Well, whether or not that got a result, we don't know. Okay, we got something here. Let's 
do this in the console so we can get the results. Okay, it looked like it didn't return any string because we grepped an empty string and everything returned for us. So let's try something like B. Does B exist in the password? Okay, so because B does exist in the password, that grep command that we saw in the PHP code is filled in with the actual password, NADA17 password as an argument, and it obviously can't find that in dictionary.txt, so we don't see any output here. Now, let's do something clever, because let's put in something, some data, like default data that we would expect to get a return, get a response from dictionary.txt, like the word anything, right? Looks like we get anything and anythings. Let's change our script to anythings, so we have an uh, easy one result if uh, if it matches. So anything is in there, but now we can run a test just like we've been doing before with our command substitution, grep for a in etc. Natus web pass Natus 17. That we saw earlier that it doesn't have the letter a in the Natus 17 password. So anything's will remain the only argument we pass to it. But if we grip for B, where B is present in NATA 17, now we're going to be searching for any things and then blah, 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 whatever the password may be. And that's not present in dictionary.txt, obviously. So now we've got that trigger, a yes or no kind of dichotomy that'll help us figure out, is this character in the password or not? But we need to leak out everything in the password. We need to leak out character by character. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can still use that grep magic to our advantage. Because, let's say, grep's using regular expressions, so if we use a special regular expression character like the caret, that means the start of the string, or the very, very first character following this. So if b is the first character, we will not get any results from our output. But because we do get results, anything's come through, okay, B is not the first character. That's what we can decipher from that. But we know B was in there, so we know our commands are going through. Now we just have to figure out which of these is the first character. Now we have to loop through all those characters, just like we've been doing in the previous video. So let's get set up with all of those um, printable characters. We had characters equal to lowercase and uppercase and digits, because we know that that is what makes up the password here for over the wire levels. Let's set up a while loop, and now we know the condition that we can use, because this password that we're using is going to be 32 characters in length. Um, so let's get a scene password variable that we'll use as a list, and while the length of scene password is less than 32, we can keep looping. And we'll do for each character in all the possible characters. Let's try and figure out what the response might be. And let's add in what we've seen of the password, joined together, because it's a list, so we want that to be a string, and the current character we're looking at. Great. So now let's test what is actually being returned to us. Let's try re.findall. Um, get the pre-tags. There's a new line following it, and um, dot star anything, a new line, end pre. Um, let's see now. We'll let, we want content here. So let's print out that, and let's see if we get results. Anything's 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 anything, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But one of these should return nothing for us at some point, right? Uh, I should have noted the character that we're on. Oh, okay. We see the trigger. We see the hit right there. So whatever that was, well, it's not a thing. <laughs> so we can, tech, we can check if returned. We can check, let's say, a variable named returned. So if returned, so if that list actually has content, then print... This is not the first character. And we'll just print out the character from that. And if it didn't get anything returned, then we know this 
this is the first character. Sure. And then let's just try that to see how it looks. Looping through every single character, blah, 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 blah. This is going to take a little bit of time, obviously, because we're brute forcing. But that's the methodology that we're going to go for. Blind leaking. And we get a hit at 8. Okay. So now we can use the same functionality we had before. If not returned, when we get a success, what we can do is we can add that character to the scene password. So it will become part of what we're looping through. And then let's break out of this original for loop. So we start again going through the alphabet. And if we do get it, let's print out join of scene password. So now very, very slowly, let's print out what we're trying. Yeah, let's actually just print out what we send it. And we don't need this one down here. Now we can see it trying to leak this out. And because we're using that grep regular expressions, the caret to denote the start of the password, we'll be able to say, okay, that number eight is the first character, and we'll loop through more and more and more until we get the next character in the password. And then the next character, because it's still adding on to that list that we're seeing and combining it as a string. So this is going to take a little bit of time, but at the very end, we're going to have the Natus level 17 password just leaked out using that nifty trick of the command substitution with grep, regular expression caret, and determining whether or not we actually get a result out of the dictionary.txt file. Let's let this run. All right, looks like the script finished. Looks like we have a password, and now let's try it for Natus level 17. Response.txt. Save this as Natus 17. Natus 17. Paste. Let's see if we get a result. And we do. We are at Natus level 17. Awesome. Okay. That's it. That's all the technique we needed to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying these. Uh, if you do like the video, please do that. Like the video. Uh, maybe leave me a comment. Tell me, let me know what you think, what I can do better, what else you'd like to see, if you're willing to subscribe. And if you... Uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, I'll see you in a later video.